it's Platt, and today I show you how to make apple port. So let's go. Alright, so recently I was reviewing, I keep a little list of random projects that kind of pop up in my head that one of these days I'll get around to, and trust me, there's a ton of them out there. But one of them I ran across that really stuck out to me was I've always wanted to do a variation on port wine. If, if you remember, uh, I made a video on, on how to make homemade port wine where we just basically ferment some grape juice, you know, kind of a poor man's wine, and then added brandy to it, and then aged it with uh, smoke chips. Well, I want to do the same now with uh, apple juice. Uh, so what we're going to do, real simple, uh, if you don't know the port making process or never had port, port is fortified wine or wine that has additional grape spirit added to it, uh, they will take a, a red wine and they'll start the fermentation process, but instead of letting it complete, letting all those sugars get fermented out, they halt the fermentation process roughly halfway through when they get to around 4 or 5% alcohol by volume. And uh, they do that by adding grape spirit. If there's too much alcohol in the solution, yeast dies, so that's a you know, a, a quick way to stop uh, fermentation. And then, so what happens was when you stop that fermentation, all that sugar is still in there. That sweetness carries through in the product. If you've ever had port before, it's very, uh, fairly viscous, very sweet, um, but also a really great after-dinner drink. Uh, you usually don't drink a, like a full five-ounce pour like you would a glass of wine. Generally, it's a couple of ounces served in a little smaller port glass. So today what we're going to do is make the uh, apple version of this. I've got, real quick, I've got some apple juice that we're just going to ferment. You know, you've seen several of my videos where we just ferment in the, uh, the container, make our life easier. Uh, we're going to add a little additional sugar. Again, this is for uh, the uh, yeast to do their work. Um, the spirit I'm going to use, since there's not, uh, you know, when making port, there's a ton of brandy out there. Now there's even some unaged brandies. They're out in the market. Uh, not so much, that much unaged apple spirit. Uh, I know Laird's that makes Apple Jack, um, they now have an unaged uh, spirit that they, they make now. Unaged apple spirits out there. But I'm actually using some uh, German uh, Opstler, uh, which is their schnapps. Uh, again, German schnapps does not have all the sugar and flavorings that we do here. It's basically a, kind of a raw fruit spirit, and this is a blend of apple and pear that I used in a video a long time ago. This is going to be the spirit we use to fortify our basically hard cider. Uh, a couple other things I've got, um, a little bit acid blend, because we are making more of a traditional wine. You don't, uh, some people will use acid blend in cider making, but generally it's more of a, a wine thing. And uh, we're going to use a uh, Lavalin wine yeast. I think I used part of this packet for our hard seltzer. Uh, this is just a good, clean fermenting yeast, which works for our product. And uh, finally, some wood cubes. If you have a small wood barrel, if you have wood spirals, uh, if you're uh, near, you know, a, a barbecue supply, they have the chips, the, the, the charred oak chips, stuff like that. Feel free to use those, but I've got these little toasted oak cubes I found in my uh, homebrew, local homebrew store. So with that being said, let's get started and make some apple port. All right, gang, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pour out a little bit of our apple juice. Uh, get your vitamin C this way. Um, anyway, pour out a little of our apple juice to give us headspace. Then I went ahead and added a half a cup of sugar. Again, the sugar is more for the yeast than it is for us. Uh, also, too, as, as I've talked about in previous videos, wine grapes, the grapes that actually make wine instead of the grapes that make juice, have a lot more sugar in them, so that's why you make that adjustment. And again, we're shooting for more of an apple wine in this little experiment. So I put a half a cup of sugar in. Now I'm going to go ahead and do a gravity reading. Now, even though we're going to add... Uh, raw spirit to this and that's the backbone alcoholic backbone of this we're still going to want to measure the fermentation just to see you know measure gravity to see you know where we are in the fermentation not so much the alcohol that we get from it even though we should get 
Again, I'm going to shoot, shoot for around 4% or so. Uh, you know, we're still going to get a little alcohol in it, but it's more to measure when that fermentation is at what process. That's another one of the byproducts of doing a gravity reading. It's not just to figure out the alcohol, but to see how well that fermentation process has gone through. So let me check our original gravity. All right, we're about 1.070. So if we were to ferment, out, ferment this out, if we were going to try to make hard cider or whatever, we'd easily be in the 8s, maybe close to 9% alcohol by volume. So again, if we're trying to sh you know, shoot for the middle, 4 to 5%. So, oh gosh, I'm going to see if I get into the 1 1.030, 1, you know, that kind of range. Oh, you know, 1.030 to 1.040. Um, maybe kind of the range we're shooting for. So at least I know uh, what my starting point is. Uh, now that we have that done, I'm going to pitch in a half a teaspoon of acid blend. And then uh, we'll go ahead and pitch our yeast and we're going to let this go for a day or two. We'll come back in about two days, check it. So you'll get, you know, you'll get bubbling, you'll get foaming. And probably about those first two or three days are always the most active. Probably about the time that kind of peaks and starts to go down is when we'll come back to check. So let me uh, go ahead and pitch the yeast and we'll come back in a couple of days and check uh, if we're ready to add our raw spirit. All right, so it's been about three, three and a half days since we started this. I want to do a quick gravity check, see where we're at, and then uh, hopefully move on to the next process. Our original gravity started off at 1.070. Let's see where we're at now. We are looking at a little more than 1.030, like 1.034, something like that. Um, Doing the quick math, that comes out to about 4.5% alcohol by volume, which is kind of what we were shooting for. Again, we didn't want this to fully ferment out. Uh, 4 to 5 is what we're shooting for. So, what's the next step now? The next step will be to add something called potassium sorbate uh, to our uh, fermented juice. Uh, this doesn't kill yeast, but what it does is it stops yeast activity, stops them from feeding and breeding, which basically does kind of kill them off. We're going to pitch this in here. We're going to do about a half a teaspoon uh, in here. And then I'm going to throw this in the fridge between the potassium sorbate and the cold temperature in my cake fridge. That will pretty much halt yeast activity and stop it from fermenting uh, all the sugars out. We'll come back in about a day or so, add our uh, apple spirit to it, and then uh, add the aging cu cubes and kind of work on the next part of the process. Also, I'll talk to you about how uh, I figure out the dilution level. So let me add the potassium sorbate, let this cool overnight, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, gang, so went ahead and add the uh, potassium sorbate, and we threw in our hard apple cider. You know, that's kind of what we we're intending to make. You know, we're doing a little different here. But anyway, I threw the potassium sorbate and the hard apple cider, threw it in my kegerator. We stopped the fermentation activity. As you can see, we're getting uh, no CO2 in the balloon, so we've halted yeast activity. At this point, we'll come in and add our uh, base unaged apple spirit. Real quick, I want to talk to you about dilution and how to figure out our ratios. Uh, you can very easily go online. There are several uh, ABV dilution ca calculators. Just type that into Google. You can find them. Uh, a lot of the people in the the uh, home distilling and moonshining uh, world have set up these calculators. You know, help them cut their product. Works for you too. Uh, basically, where I'm going with this, I'm wanting to shoot for about 20%. Uh, you know, the high teens to around 20% is where a lot of ports are. This is our take. You know, on the port, an apple port. We are going to uh, use 22 ounces of our hard apple cider with five ounces of our 80 proof spirit. Uh, I calculate this at 
roughly 5%, so to get around 20%, it's 22 ounces of our hard apple cider and 5 ounces of our base spirit. Um, that will give us 27 ounces overall. I'm putting this in a one quart jar. I want a little head space because I want to have room to add our oak chips. We're going to use that to age. I'm not using a barrel or any wood screws. We'll try these oak chips which are used a lot of times in home brewing. We're going to carefully pour out 22 ounces. Uh, great thing about those dilution cal calculators, they also, uh, you can adjust the size to, um, you know, if you want to use liters, ounces, gallons, what have you, um, comes in very handy. So, you're able to size your batches differently, which I think is really cool. I'm just going with the quart here, just again, this is more of an experiment to see how it comes out. So we got our 22 ounces in there and now we're going for five. If there was any uh, yeast activity left in there, this right here would pretty much finish it off. Um, yeast do produce alcohol by a certain point they don't survive and that's generally when we get into the higher teens. Uh, some specialty yeast can survive in the low 20s, but we didn't use that, so we're not worried about fermentation anymore. Real quick, I'm going to add these toasted cubes. Whatever uh, wood you want to play around with, these are just generic kind of toast, medium toast oak cubes that I find in my home brew shop. Uh, you can, like I said, use oak spirals uh, that's popular in winemaking. Uh, you could go to your you know, barbecue supply and find, and find, you know, random oak chips. I know Jack Daniels has their own oak chips, stuff like that. Feel free to play around. Uh, this is what I'm going to use. All right. So I'm going to let this sit for a month and we'll come back. I'll do a completely different video on, on the tasting. I know some people like me to taste the stuff on the same video and make it. I kind of like splitting it too. And I've gotten feedback that some people like that too. Also, too, I kind of don't want to wait around a month to <laughs> re-edit the video. So, uh, but there will be a uh, taste test. We'll come back in about a month or so. Um, with some of the oak I use, compared to like big barrels, I get I'll get roughly a year's worth of aging out of one month at this size. Bigger barrels, a year equals a year. But anyway, so so we'll come back and see how about one month of aging will affect our apple port. And one last thing before we head out, I'm going to give this cider a try. Again, we're not letting it fully ferment out. You know, most of the time when I make cider, it's fully ferment. So, you know, just taste what we have here. Oh, wow. That is really good. Uh, wow. That is really, it's nice and sweet. I think this is probably what everybody thinks apple cider is. And uh, it's not, you know, if you go, well, nowadays they have sweetened up ciders. But the old woodchuck hard cider, stuff like that, that you used to get 20 years ago, or they were really dry and that threw a lot of people off. This is not dry. This has a lot of sweetness. Just takes, like, real good sweet apple juice, but it's got alcohol in it. Oh. So that maybe we kind of might get two products out of this, you know. We'll try an apple port, and then we got a... Halfway for a minute, hard apple cider that really maintains its sweetness. So, with that being said, I hope you liked the video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them in the comment section. Or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bottoms up.